Hi everyone, this is Osiris from the Cover City News, Unk Entertainment Stones in the Color of Rare Blog, and your weekly show host for 15 minutes. Guess where I am? You would never believe Little Girl is downtown in Little Tokyo at this amazing basement that is housing a bunch of taiko drums. That's right, we are talking to Brian Yamami of the Taiko series that is happening here. It's called Taiko Nation. Uh, Taiko found, community was founded in 2000 and Brian is the managing director for this amazing three-day concert series that is going to be on July 19th and 20th downtown in Little Tokyo at the Aratani Little Tokyo Theater downtown. So Brian, say hello to our audience. Hello. So can you explain to everyone what Oh, first of all, let me just ask you this. I know there's a myth about how Taiko came to be. The myth is that the Shinto goddess um, emptied a barrel of sake and started thumping on top of the sake, on top of the drum so furiously that it produced this sound. Mm -hmm. uh, she did this to entice the sun goddess from coming out of a cave that she was hidden in, and thus we have Taiko. So can you elaborate a little bit on what you guys are doing? Uh, I know it's 500 participants from all over the world, Asia, Mexico, um, United States, Canada, and go. Uh, well, we're putting on a three-day gathering. It's really exciting. Uh, taiko is something uh, that, like you said, started with this uh, myth, this Shinto myth, uh, centuries ago. And the drum has actually been around in Japan for hundreds of years. Uh, it's been, it was used in like religious ceremonies, in kind of more formalized types of music and theater. Uh, in regional kind of like folk forms of dance and festivals and it wasn't really until just about um, 60 years ago that it really started to uh, coalesce into kind of like an art form mm -hmm. and it happened in Japan and also here in the US about 45 years ago uh, with people that just wanted to uh, kind of express their cultural heritage um, they wanted to do it loud they wanted to do it very vocally and very and proudly yeah. and they found the taiko and they thought hey, this is loud, this is lots of fun, why don't, I, why don't we give this a shot and mm -hmm. get more people involved? And so that's how kind of Taiko was born, um, into kind of this new art form with lots of drummers, both male and female, um, just pounding away, creating music, um, creating dances along with it, taking it to the stage, and just having a great time. So now let's talk a little bit about what this particular event is about, why it's celebrated, why you're here in our lovely Los Angeles, little Tokyo area doing it. I know that part of what I read was that you guys have worked on commercials, you've worked on TV, your music is oh, off the chain. You've worked with Stevie Wonder, John Legend, Alicia Keys, and uh, Usher. So how did Tycho become this kind of commercialized drumming that it's not like segmented anymore it's like now like oh yeah it's hip to use taiko drum in our music and in videos so let's talk about that a little bit well i think that taiko has a you know has a really simple sound a really simple deep um really visceral sound that attracts you know pretty much anyone that listens to it it's universal it's not something that really necessarily sounds like really japanese it, it just sounds um loud and it really hits you in your gut and so that's why i think uh, a lot of these musical artists have have thought, hey, you know, I like Taiko. Taiko what has a great sound. Let's, you know, let me add it into my band. Yeah. And it's been, you know, a great experience for us, you know, working with these artists and learning from them. Um, but yeah, you know, it just has this really great universal sound and appeal, and it's something that's, you know, allowed anyone to kind of play. You know, men, women, uh, young kids, uh, senior citizens, anyone that can pick up the drumsticks can play Taiko. Now, how? young can a person start with Taiko? Because I know the drums themselves weigh about, what, 70 pounds? Or even more in some cases? And then, good Lord, I don't know how much to stick my way themselves. But it does look like a very vigorous kind of thing that you have to be in good shape in order to do. So how young can they start playing Taiko that, you know, they're com that it's comfortable? Right. Well, we start teaching our kids at around 7 to 8. But we know other Taiko groups that start kids as young as 4 or 5. Um, you know, much shorter classes um, due to attention span, but um, yeah, it's something that you could do at any age and just kind of play throughout your entire life. There are youth groups, 
um, that go up until kids graduate from high school. There's actually a big movement of collegiate taiko groups. So a lot of universities will have taiko clubs on campus. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's quite mm -hmm. it's quite huge. Um, and we are hearing the taiko drums in the back right now. Yeah. They're practicing. We're actually at at their rehearsal. So just the so the audience knows this is like a prep for the show. Mm -hmm. And Brian has just been so kind to let us in and let us talk to him a little bit about behind the scenes. Yeah. So when did you start doing taiko? I started doing taiko at age eight. Uh, it was something my parents kind of forced me into. I wasn't necessarily looking at the drums and being like, I want to do that. It was just something that they said, you know, learn about your culture, you know, go to taiko class, you mm -hmm. know, get out some aggression. <laughs> and are you, were you born here in the U.S. or were you born in uh, Japan or another country? Yeah, I'm fourth generation, so oh, wow. um, I was born in New York, but uh, my family uh, grew up in Hawaii. Uh, it oh, okay. was my great-grandparents who immigrated uh, a long time ago to, uh, actually to Hawaii first, to work in the plantations and sugarcane fields, and they never left. Now, I want to make note to the audience. Brian said that he was fourth generation and that his parents, that he, you were born in Hawaii, right? And that they worked the sugarcane fields and uh, they were like, um, I guess, you, what would you call it, um, indentured servants or what, what do they call there? Uh, geez, I mean, immigrant laborers. Immigrant laborers. Yeah. So see, I want especially people in this country from other cultural groups to know that we are not, America is not the only country that has ever experienced being enslaved or, 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 or laborers that were, you know, um, mistreated or some sort of way made to feel subservient. So that's an important note that Brian touched upon. Now, you have a t-shirt that says Tycho Nerd. What does that mean? <laughs> Tycho Nerd. Uh, we have a, a, a number of different Tycho related shirts that we just kind of use to um, so, you know, we're just kind of a bunch of a, you know, uh, we're all American, we're mostly American, and so we kind of a, take our art form with a little bit of a sense of humor. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, all of us kind of live, eat, breathe Taiko, and so mm -hmm. we're Taiko nerds, and, you know. And that's the way it goes, huh? So now, uh, let's talk a little bit about the 500 participants mm -hmm. that are going to be at that stage, a little Tokyo, mm -hmm. on the 19th. How do you go about choosing and selecting who gets to go on tour? Who gets to be like on camera and on the stage really plowing into this stuff? Mm -hmm. Well, like you said, we have over 500 participants coming from all over the world for the actual World Taiko Gathering. And that's kind of a series of workshops, community building activities, kind of informal performances. And on the 19th and 20th is the Taiko Nation concerts where we've selected kind of like a, a representation of all those performers uh, to put onto the stage. And so we, you know, we searched on YouTube. We looked at different Taiko groups' websites. Wow. Uh, we knew some of the international groups, but, you know, a lot of them we didn't know. We just knew of them from the web. And so, you know, we knew there was a really professional Taiko group from Australia. So we just kind of contacted them and said, you know, what do you think about coming out to L.A. and, you know, playing? And, uh, you know, we met other groups in our travels and tours along the way. And, you know, we just kind of put together a program that we thought really represented Taiko from all over the world. And, uh, yeah, so some of the pieces are collaborative. And so in the opening, for example, in the opening song of the show, uh, we're going to have Taiko players from Australia, the UK, Japan, the US, uh, Spain, Brazil, Argentina, and Belgium all Belgium. together. Yeah. Wow. Belgian Taiko. <laughs> Belgium Tacos, I never would have thought of that. Now, do you guys bring them over here? Or do they have to pay their own way? How does that work? How do they go through the process of do they have to get themselves here or once they're selected or do they get carte blanche or what happens? <laughs> Uh, well, we held like a fundraiser on Indiegogo to raise funds to help them uh, afford the travel expenses of coming out to L.A. And, you know, we wish we could have brought out even more. Um, we raised a, a fair amount of money, um, and we were able to really support a lot of the groups to come on over and be a part of it. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, I've got to just kind of slow it down just a little bit because I want to talk a little bit about the people that are participating. Okay. There's a Chieko Kojima, Kojima. There's a Kaoru uh, Watanabe from New York. There's a Taikos, right? Taikos from Sydney, Australia. Is that the person you were speaking of? Yeah. And there is a Kagi Musha Taiko that's from uh, the UK. 
uh, Grandmaster Seishi Tanaka. Now, the Grandmaster Seishi Tanaka from San Francisco. Why is he the Grandmaster? Is he going to be the person to give direction? Do they need direction, or is it something they just come on the stage and start doing, or is it something they have to really like have someone like a Grandmaster, you know, show them what to do or direct them in terms of performances? Uh, well, he's kind of affectionately known as Tanaka Sensei, yes. uh, teacher. You know, Sensei obviously yes, a teacher and is a, a, a kind of a respectful term of endearment. Uh, Tanaka Sensei, he was the very first uh, taiko drummer in the United States. He was a Japanese immigrant who came over in nineteen in the nineteen sixties. He went to one of the early cherry blossom festivals in San Francisco. He saw there was no taiko, <clears throat> was appalled, went back to Japan. Uh, studied, got some taiko drums, came back, and he formed the very first taiko group in the U.S. Really? So, Where in San Francisco? Uh, South San Francisco. Why does San Francisco seem to be the place that you guys end up when you come here? That's where my boy Bruce Lee is. What, didn't he land in San <laughs> Francisco, Oakland, <laughs> that kind of area before everybody kind of thought of him? So now when he comes over here, I, I, I know that he is a sensei and he's revered and respected as such. But what, what is his particular function going to be in terms of making this show and this series a success? Uh, well, Tanaka Sensei is leading us in the finale of the concert. Oh. Uh, so, you know, throughout the whole show, <clears throat> there are groups from, like you said, Australia, all over the world. We kind of thought, well, wouldn't it be great to kind of close out the show uh, by bringing it back home to where American Taiko started, and that's with Tanaka Sensei. So it's a, now, now <clears throat> you just said something else, American Taiko. Mm -hmm. Is there a difference in between American Taiko and Taiko Taiko from Japan or the old country, or... Is it, has it been augmented because it's in America or is it just the same taiko that your great, great, great grandfather and grandmother knew of? Uh, I think it's quite different. I mean, people. What's why, you know, in, in what way? Uh, well, our group in particular tries to take a really American uh, approach to taiko. You know, we, we respect the traditions and where it came from, uh, but we <clears throat> feel like we put an aesthetic and experience into it. So some of our taiko songs, like the one they're rehearsing right now, has more of a hip hop flavor. To what is it. the name of that? The, it's what called that? expanding. Expanding. Yeah, and so in that song, there's a there's hip hop choreography. Uh, there's a hi hat and wood block. That, you know, oh, there's wow. a lot of different like influences that you wouldn't necessarily find in Japanese taiko. And then when they are doing the actual performances, which they will be doing next week, um, how long of a break do you guys get between actually pounding on those taiko drums? I mean, don't your arms get tired or something, or do they need a little bit of a break or something in between shows or sets or what happens? We're all super buff. <laughs> you look super buff. <laughs> he is fine too, ladies. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's something that taiko players just train for, like any other like exercise or uh, you know sport type of thing. Taiko is kind of a combination of you know sports or athleticism and music. So. Does it involve martial arts at all? Do you have to know or have been involved or do martial arts in, in order to really play the taiko? Uh, not really. Or beat uh, the taiko. Of, most of our players haven't had martial arts training, but there's a lot of similarities in the kind of form. It's a very grounded type of music. Mm -hmm. um, there are certain like shouts or expressions of energy that are similar to the martial arts, but you know, but it's music and a form of uh, artistic expression. Okay. Well, I know you've got to get back, mm -hmm. and we love uh, talking to you, and I can't wait to come see the show. Yeah. It's going to be really hot. What I want you to do is give a shout out to your website. I think it's www taiko project in big caps that's the way it was sent to me dot com and then there's another www.jaccc.org and why don't you tell us the address and where the performance is going to be held you can say Saturday Sunday you know just give us a little shout out on you know give a little promo on where it's going to be held and the address and the venue okay uh, well the taiko nation concerts are happening on Saturday July 19th and Sunday July 20th However, Saturday nights is sold out. Oh, wow. So, so are they adding two, more shows? Uh, well, we have two shows on Sunday Oh, uh, that are that there are still tickets available. Yeah, you have a matinee show at 2, right, on Sunday? A matinee Sunday? show at 2 and, and then an evening show at 7 p.m. Okay, for those of you that want to uh, come. Yeah, for tickets, you can visit jccc.org. Uh, the theater is the Japan American Theater in Little Tokyo, and it's located at 244 South San Pedro Street in L.A. in downtown Little Tokyo. Now, and if someone okay. wants to reach out and perhaps 
participate themselves next time or contact you, what would they do? Do you have a Facebook page? Twitter, where can they reach Brian? <laughs> uh, yeah, we have a Tyco Project page on Facebook. You can also visit our website at tycoproject.com. Uh, we are on Twitter. I think it's just twitter twitter.com slash Tyco Project. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, come check out what we're doing. We also offer classes. So, oh, that's wonderful. You know, anyone can learn. That's wonderful. And where is your, is it a handle mm -hmm. on your Twitter? Is it at um, something or just the way you said I it? I guess at Tyco Project. Tyco Project. I'm not in charge of Twitter. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. You're doing a great job. You have enough to work for. So again, let's, I'm um, thanking Brian profusely, people. Again, Brian, your mommy, from, um, he is the managing director for this entire content series, a very big job he's taken on. We are so thankful that you invited the Cover City News, Anka Entertainment Stones of Color Rare Blog, and the 15 Minutes to Show. So, for all of you that want to come out and see Tycho in the buff, with these great guys and girls doing their thing on the set, please come out to the Aratani Theater and Little Tokyo on July 19th and 20th, and you can see for yourself the magic of the Taiko drum. Thank you. It's a wrap. <laughs>